Windsurfing in flat water is an absolute pleasure. But in reality, the surface is not always silky smooth and especially not during those good days when the wind is strong enough to get out your smaller sails. Hi, my name is Nico and if you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back to literally the fastest growing windsurfing channel on YouTube right now. This is where you will not only get an insight of my life as professional windsurfer with vlogs, documentaries and more, but also you will speed up your learning curve with tutorials like this one. So make sure you click on the subscribe button and then switch the notification bell on so you don't miss out on anything. See, the wind creates chop in the lakes and waves in the seas. And these often create problems in regards to controlling your equipment. Today, in this short yet detailed tutorial, we're going to talk about how you can master your transition from flat water to choppy or wavy spots and what the key to more control is. In order for you to get a better understanding of what's going on, I'm going to divide this into three sections. Premises, chop from the side and chop from the front. With premises, I mean a couple of basic things that you need to keep in mind, such as the fact that the windier it is, the more extreme the chop or waves will typically be. And although the wind has an influence on your potential speed, windier doesn't automatically mean that you'll be faster, as chop and waves limit your speed potential. You might already understand where this is going. Control, besides the wind, chop and some others, is our limiting factor to speed. Control, however, is heavily affected by speed and the water conditions. So the faster you go, the less control you will have. That's a common problem that we as professionals constantly try to tackle by developing and tuning the gear, working out in the gym and improving our technique. While you cannot change the prevailing conditions, you can always work on improving your control. How to deal with too much wind you can learn in my previous How to Sail Overpower tutorial, which you can find down below in the video description. And how to deal with what's going on underneath you, we will take a look at now. Before we start differentiating between chop and wave, I want to talk about a mistake that is so common. Many windsurfers will be busy focusing on their sail, stands, grip or other things rather than on what's going on in front of them. You need to anticipate what's coming at you to avoid the negative effects of it. Today we're going to focus on smaller and mid-sized chop and if you're interested in dealing with bigger chops and actual waves that's something I'll be talking about in our online coaching clinic where we'll discuss these things more detailed as on this channel I really try to compress the information for you but if you want to spend more time to improve on the water like many of you already did, go ahead and check out the online coaching through the channel membership down below this video. Smaller and mid-sized chop most commonly comes from the same direction as the wind. So if you're on a reach, it comes from the side. If you're on downwind, you're gonna pass it from behind. And if you're on an upwind, you'll rather head towards the chop. So the key in order to avoid chop hitting you from the side is to lift the windward rail. Take a close look at my windward rail compared to the leeward rail. As the windward rail lifts, the ride becomes a lot less bouncy. Now you're probably wondering how to do that. The trick is to slightly lift the heels, which would normally make you go downwind but you're gonna counter that by closing the gap between the board and the sail. I mentioned exactly this movement in my last tutorial on how to go better upwind. It's gonna take you a while to find the right balance, but it will definitely pay off. Since you will pass many lines of chops as you're moving forward, you'll hit a lot of water with the front of your board too. If you watch my videos since a while, you'll already know that you want your board flying, making it touch as least water as possible. Apart from going faster, this allows you to keep the surface that can get attacked by the chop small. It also allows you to connect from chop to chop. So you're aiming to only touch the top of the chops, leaving the gaps out. Of course, you won't be able to hit the top of the chops at 100% rate, but it's definitely better than going into every little gap. Now, if you're not at a level that you can fly your board so freely over the chop, the problem will be that every face of the chop has the potential to throw your nose up and make you lose control or to make you hit the chop so hard that your board will slow down and you feel like you're about to catapult. By the way, let me know in the comments which one of the two is more common for you. I'm actually really curious which one you guys struggle more with. So in order to gain control over this situation, your legs and body have to work together like a suspension. The moment you hit the chop with the front of your board, 
your body will compress by bending your knees. Doing that will help you to release some thin pressure for a brief moment, which is important since hitting the chop will power up the fin for a brief moment. The timing of that movement is crucial as doing it too early will increase chances to catapult and doing it too late will make you end up in the air. Well, if that's what you're looking for, go for it. Okay guys, so I want you to take a look at my legs. I'm really using my legs as a suspension to go through the chop. Really using my whole body as a suspension. Try to keep the fin pressure as steady as you can. Because when you hit a wave or when you hit a chop, the fin pressure increases. So try to take a little pressure out but not too much, so you keep it even. If you time it right, your board will pretty much follow along the shape of the chop. If you still feel like the chop lifts your nose too far, you can apply pressure on the base by putting some weight on your front hand and in consequence the base, the exact moment your nose is about to fly off. But don't forget to keep your leg movement as I mentioned before. On top of that, this is a movement that happens in a very short time frame. And once you pass the chop, you need to go back to your initial position or even opposite while you're going down the chop. How extreme you perform these movements depends a little bit on how big the chop is and how fast you pass it. All right, this was it for this video. Tune in again next Sunday for a new video. More tutorials are coming as we are just in the process of producing a bunch of them. So make sure to subscribe, click the bell icon if you don't want to miss them. And please, if you think this video helped you, give it a like. And I would say, See you next time.